Color grading can be so overwhelming, especially in DaVinci Resolve, where there are nodes, wheels, curves, masks, and so many tools to work with. But before we drown in option overload, let's break down a few simple tools to help you color grade better and faster. Now, if you're looking for a professional colorist with a super technical explanation, then this is not the video for you because I'm just going to be explaining things in a super simple, super easy way that just shows my process of doing things. So let's talk about it. All right, let's jump straight into DaVinci Resolve 20. You'll see here we have a clip that we need to color grade. So let's head over to the color page. Now, the first thing to understand when it comes to DaVinci Resolve and color grading the color page is that it works through a node system, which is basically just different layers that you can use to color grade and color correct your footage. So as you add nodes, which you can do on a Mac by option S, that will add a node basically from left to right, this will stack our adjustments on top of each other, almost if you think of it from top to bottom, or you can think of it as stacking on top of one another like that. So from left to right, your adjustments will add on to each other. The first step in color grading or color correction, whichever step you're in, is to convert your footage if you shot it in like S-Log3 or if you shot it in C-Log, if you shoot Canon or any of the other brands, you wanna convert that log footage into Rec. 709. I'm not going to dive super deep into conversion from S-Log3 and all of that in this video. If you want me to make a video specifically about that, let me know in the comments below and I can definitely do that. This video is gonna be focusing on basic color grading tools and how to use them. So there are several different methods that we can use to get to a place where we can start using these tools. I personally love to use LUTs that already convert to Rec. 709 and give it just a little bit of a natural look, if you wanna call it that. So I'm just going to add a node and add on the Phantom LUTs RE Natural. It just gives it a very natural look, almost like a Rec. 709 look with just a little bit of a difference. I also love to use Mark Bone's YouTube blog Cinema. This gives it to me more of a stylized look, so I'm not gonna start with that one just for the sake of this video and me showing you the color grading tools. So let's just use the Phantom LUTs Neutral and again, however you want to start this process, I'm not going to focus on this. I'm just getting us to a starting point. We're now in Rec. 709. It's been converted and we have like a normal looking image to work with so that we can go over these tools. I always add that on my last node and do my corrections on my first node. Now, as far as how many nodes you have, node trees, getting super in depth into all of that, I'm not going into that in this video. There are several different opinions. There are tons of different ways to do it. I'm not a professional colorist. I know that the traditional way is to have a lot of nodes and you can label each one, like label one for contrast, label one for tint, label one for white balance adjustment. And that way you can see each and every adjustment on and off on its own individual node. I don't do it that way. It's just hasn't been part of my process. It's something I probably should do. So again, don't judge me on that. Find what works for you. I just dump all of my adjustments onto this one node. So I have my LUT node, and then I have all of my corrections in my other node. I know that's not proper. Don't come at me in the comments. It's just the way my brain works right now. Coloring is something that I'm getting better at. So maybe in the future, I'll have a nice node tree and we can all be happy about it. But the point of this video is just to go over the tools and what they do. So let's jump into that. Let's talk about contrast first. There are several different ways that you can get contrast in your video. There's the contrast slider, and you wanna make sure while you're doing these adjustments, if you're following along, that you have your waveform open. You can also look at the parade. These are different tools that you can visualize the color of your image and how everything levels out. So just go through and familiarize yourself with these different scopes. So you've got parade, waveform, vector scope, histogram. I usually leave mine on waveform just because it kind of shows the whole image and gives me an overall view of where everything is at. So we can see that as we add contrast using the slider, it just adds contrast, you know, overall to the image from making it flat to spreading out those highlights, shadows, and midtones. We can reset that. You can also achieve contrast. So as we're in the color wheels section, you can also achieve contrast by lift, gamma, and gain. So this is your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. And you can adjust each of these to get contrast in your image. So as you can see, we can darken our highlights, watch how it affects the image, watch how it also affects your waveform. You can lift those shadows, 
We'll reset that. You can do the same thing with your gamma, which is your midtones. You can see those moving and adjusting. And then your gain is your highlights. So as you increase those, you're of course clipping some of those highlights, but you can also bring those down and you can achieve contrast using that. You can also come over to the curves tab and this gives you the most flexibility because you can come in and create points on your graph and this is your highlights. You can bump those a little bit. You can bring down your midtones, bring them up. You can bring down your shadows and create contrast that way. So you have three different ways. You have the slider, which just gives you contrast. Lift Gamma Gain gives you a little bit more control over your contrast. And then the curves gives you the most control because you can keep adding little points to this and adjusting it super specifically however you need. I mostly use Lift Gamma Gain just because it's the easiest and it's a really quick way to do it. I also use the contrast slider sometimes. So let's just come in and get our contrast to a place where we like it. I'll usually come in, let's just increase the slider just a bit. Usually don't go too heavy on that. And then I make minor adjustments with our Lift Gamma Gain. So let's just bring Lift down a little. Let's bring Gain down just a little for some of those highlights and then boost our gamma just a smidge. And this is a before and after of just giving it a little bit more contrast, a little bit more pop to the image overall. So that's our contrast. Now let's talk about some colors and kind of get into color things. First of all, you've got your basic adjustments here in the color wheels. You've got your temperature, you've got your tint. So let's just make sure that we like the temperature. I might warm it up just a smidge. And then for our tint, let's just kind of look at that. Let's add a little bit of magenta just because it is a little bit green. I'm mainly focusing on my skin tones, just making sure those look good. Again, so this is before and after of our contrast, our tint, and our temperature. You can come down here and even add just a little bit of saturation if you want to. And now let's kind of customize some of these colors. And there's several different ways that you can do this. You can come over to curves and you have several here that you can click through hue versus hue. You have hue versus saturation and you have hue versus luminance. Hue versus hue is going to allow you to adjust specific colors and change their hue. So for example, let's come in and change this blue. So I'm just gonna select, you, it automatically selects your dropper tool. So you can just come over in your image and select these different blues. That's gonna add points as, you're, as you can see to our graph, it's adding different points so that we can adjust. So we can just go in here, move this one, and then we can adjust our blue and that will change the hue of that blue. So if we wanna make it a little bit more teal, from where it is, we can just push it just a little, kind of adjust these how we want, and then maybe bring this in so it's more gradual. And that gives us a more teal look for our blue color in the image. We can also go over here and adjust this yellow if we want to. The important thing to remember with your yellow, orange, and red is that it will affect your skin tone if you're just doing overall adjustments without using a mask or anything like that. So we could come in and just boost this a little, just see how it's affecting the image. You can go crazy with it, or you can just do small, just subtle changes right there. And that just gives it more of an orange glow versus the yellow. Now let's click over to hue versus saturation. So this is gonna take away the saturation of different colors in your image. So if we want to, we can select these lamp colors again, come over to these points, we could pull down the saturation of that particular color in the image. So as you can see, you can increase the saturation or you can desaturate it. So I actually like that a little bit desaturated. We wanna kinda of protect our skin tones. So we'll roll that off just a little. We can desaturate that color just a little. And there you go. Now let's check out one more tool that is new for DaVinci Resolve 20. It's called Color Slice. And this is one of my favorite pages in the color tab now, because to me, it's easier to adjust different colors than using the curves. So let's in fact, go back to our curves. Let's reset that, all the adjustments in the hue and all that. Let's reset it back to normal. Go back to color slice and let me show you how this works. So you can come into your specific colors, like we could take our blue. This is gonna be your saturation. And this is gonna be like your density of the color. Then you can change the hue. 
So let's just bump, let's drag the hue to more of a cyan like we did with our curves. We can increase the saturation or desaturate it. Let's desaturate it a little and let's play with density just to see what it looks like. And then let's do the same thing with our yellow. We can bring that more orange and we can desaturate it a bit, play with the density, see what that looks like. And it labels your skin tone, which is really nice because then you can adjust that skin tone color, which in this image actually covers a whole lot of the image because there's a lot of orange or skin tone colors. But you can easily come in and adjust all with the color slice tool. So just with those small adjustments and only using a few tools, here's the before and after. We created like a minimal stylized look, but it looks really nice and I didn't use a ton of tools. It didn't take me a ton of time. That's how simple this can be. And here's the most important thing to remember. In DaVinci Resolve Color, there are so many tools and a lot of them do the same thing, but they do it in different ways. Just like with contrast, you can use the contrast slider or you can do contrast with lift gamma gain, which gives you even more control, or you can have even more control if you use the curves. But all of them are doing the same thing. You're just getting to your end result in a different way. And the easiest way to understand all these tools is just to get in there and see what works best for you. I know that there are very technical rules in color grading and professional colorists use certain systems. They use, you know, middle grade needs to be 18% or, you know, this color should be a certain value. But if you're just wanting to do it for fun or if you're just wanting to make your videos look better, you're not wanting to go the professional colorist route. This is just my process on how I use some of these tools in a super simple way to still get great results for your video. I basically live in the color wheels tab. I use saturation, temperature, tint, contrast, lift gamma gain, and your offset. I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but your offset can affect your whole image. So that can just bring up everything just a little or bring down everything just a little. And then I love the color slice tool to go in and edit my colors and give it more of a stylized feel. Anyway, that was just a few simple tools that I use in DaVinci Resolve to color grade videos, color correct videos, make them look better. And I do it super fast, super easy, super simple. And hopefully this helps you. I know this was just skimming the surface. There's so much that you can do in DaVinci Resolve and especially in the color page. It's endless, the possibilities, the tools, the waveforms and scopes and masks and power grades and LUTs and node trees. It can get overwhelming, but I just wanted to go over a few few tools to help you color grade better and faster in DaVinci Resolve 20. Hopefully this video added some value. Let me know in the comments if you want me to do some more videos in this DaVinci Resolve series. What specifically do you want to learn in DaVinci Resolve? I'm hoping to do more of these on the channel. So let me know what topics you want me to cover from a super simple standpoint of just my process and my experience so far with DaVinci Resolve 20 as being a filmmaker for six plus years now. Anyway, if you like this video, be sure to check out some of the other videos on my channel, especially this DaVinci Resolve video right here.